because we just kind of feel like we're all guessing. We know Jacoby yeah. Myers is a target hog. We know Devontae Parker is brought in to be the outside guy. We know Kendrick Bourne is kind of like it's a hor- horrible internet meme right now. He's, he's the guy who's got that dog in him. Like he's a really <laughs> tough chain. I know. Sorry, Tom. Really <laughs> no, tough I just chain the dog mover, because. touchdown score. And like, who who is the top target in this? I would Patriots put all my chips. Today? I would put all my chips on Kendrick Bourne. All of them. Wow. Guy caught 55 of the 70 passes he was throwing last year as a wide receiver. He ran for a buck 25 on uh, 10 carries. He also, Mac, I think, had a 126 quarterback rating when throwing to him. And I do believe in quarterback ratings through everybody else with their bullshit. Uh, I think quarterback rating usually matches up. The good ones have high ones. The mediocre ones have mediocre. They tend to. <laughs> uh, so – some of them scam it now, by the way. Though I'm like Kirk Cousins. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Do. I mean, they do, but just you're gonna be a point or two. If if somebody's over 110, they're they're a good player. Um, but he is to me, and I said this recently, and I got booed off the air. Well, believe me, we were gonna bring this up. Uh, okay, I know what you're gonna mention. <laughs> I want you to do it. Go ahead. I was gonna say you made some waves when you predicted a Debo Samuel type year for Mr. Kendrick Bourne, and like I do see the similarity. I Kendrick Bourne. I thought it was a really underrated player before he signed with the page. I just think the word that comes to mind for me for Kendrick Bourne is like rugged. And like the kind of guy, I mean, it's, again, it's a cliche, the kind of guy you could trust to make like big mm-hmm. plays, to like get a first down, to make a really tough catch in the Reds. And, you know, I don't think people really realize he had over 800 yards last year. Right. And like he, he had a better year than people realize. And so the, that my eyes definitely popped when I saw your comment, and especially coming from you because – I've never found you to be prone to hyperbole or anything like that. Yeah, I've always you know, you're like a straight shooter. So I, was like, wow. I like to get the dark horse though. I like to get it out there early. You know, I peed on my territory with Kendrick Bourne, so I mean, it's, <laughs> it's all upside if he comes in and plays great. Um, but it was really fed by the notion of they're going to switch to more of a San Francisco 49ers style mm-hmm. offense. So if they're doing that, who is their Debo? And that would be Kendrick Bourne. Now Debo Samuel is a running back. He is much more stockily built than Kendrick Bourne. He can take more punishment, can probably give out more punishment just because of his build. So when I said like Debo, I, and again, I didn't state this because it was a TV hit, but they know all the time in the world. He's going to fill that role where he's going to be the jet sweep guy. Um, he's going to be your catch and run guy. He is by far their best catch and run guy. Jacoby Myers is, runs about a four, six, and God bless him, he is phenomenal against zone, but he gets no separation. That's why, Pat Corain, when you talked about um, completion percentage over expected, the reason it's so high is nobody gets open. No, the, the Patriots don't have one single wide receiver who makes a defensive coordinator go, oh, we're going to do with this guy. As a group, they can make you sweat. They can make you sweat with a scheme but they don't have any separators. And that's why Tyquan Thornton, who has actually been capable, is worth um, – keeping on a short list of guys you might want to pick up if he does start getting enough reps. Well, so to the born stuff, is he out there all the time? Because that's, and I guess, is anyone out there all the time? Um, because, you know, last year you had Jacoby Myers. He ran a route on 92% of dropbacks in, in games that he was in. And, you know, that, that's a full-time, you know, complete uh, package in terms of just being out there running all the routes if Kendrick Bourne is going to see a big increase from where he was at last year, which was, which was only 70%, which is mm-hmm. kind of like a, a more of a part-time player who is a big part of the offense still. Does that come at the expense of Myers? Does it come at the expense of Devonte Parker not having a full-time role? Like there's only so many routes. You're so right. who who's out there the most this year, regardless of the targets, who's actually just running the route. I think it's a great, it's a great question. It's impossible to pin down. I think the Patriots will love to upgrade the speed and explosiveness at their slot position, which is filled by Jacoby Myers. So I would say some of the targets are going to come away from Jacoby Myers, who's mm-hmm. not going to be a guy who's going to be a 15 yards per catch guy. Johnny Smith is also going to steal some, some targets because they really want to take advantage of it. Robert Kraft basically said and stated in the off season, really want to see some jumps from the guys that we signed as free agents last year. The reason they have $15 million cap hits. Say if they uh, end up with 22 catches and 51 targets. Kraft's going to go, What are we doing? Why do we spend 30 million dollars in cap money on these two if we didn't give them the ball? So, I think that does enter into it. So, they'll come away from Myers, but I would say the Bourne would be a, a, a good number two in fantasy 
And I think John U. Smith could be interesting, but Hunter Henry would be a more consistent buy than John U. Smith because he's going to catch 55 to 60 balls and he's going to score eight touchdowns. Do you think Myers is, you know, particularly hurt by this change because he seemed like he was thriving in this complex offense? I think that I don't. You mean emotionally? Does it hurt his feelings? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, yeah, I mean, probably. Yeah, he probably <laughs> says, "What else do I have to do?" But look at his look at his touchdown numbers. That tells you how explosive he is. Yeah, I, mean, I just mean in terms of the offensive fit. Like, he, is he kind of losing an advantage over his competition? He's always going to have a significant advantage in his dependability, but they're always going to look to replace him. You know what I mean? It's going to be like yeah, yeah. anything that you own that you know is consistent, but boy, I could upgrade that thing, but it works so good. That's what Jacoby Myers is. And so I, it would be tough to see him go elsewhere for the Patriots, but at the end of this year, he's a free agent and he'll be a guy who caught a bunch of passes. It'll be interesting to see if anybody in the NFL says, boy, we want to have that guy who can catch 80 balls come here, or they say, he's catching 80 balls because he plays a slot in the Patriots offense. Yeah. It's really inter- in- interesting that you mentioned Tyquan Thornton because like you said, is like someone I've been doing this for a while now. Like I would have never even really considered drafting like a second round receiver in a pay, the Patriots offense because I would just take it for granted that they wouldn't make a rookie impacts, so that it would just be over their head. You know, Bill wouldn't trust them. But I mean, if things are getting simpler, I mean, who do you see making more noise on the outside this year, the rookie or the the trade addition, Devontae Parker? I think they're going to have such drastically different roles. Parker is basically what Nikhil Harry was supposed to be. Same build, same uh, athletic ability in terms of being able to high point the ball. Just plays harder than Harry did, though. He'll use his body and box people out, whereas Harry would put his body there and then get run through. Um, Thornton is just an absolute elk. I mean, it's just ridiculous (laughs) to watch the way he accelerates with, with minimal effort. And as a wide receiver, there's all, you know, we know how eccentric wide receivers can be. This is a polished, professional, mature, taking my business seriously wide receiver. So um, he's got upside, but I, I think that Parker would be more of, you're exactly right, Dr. Corain. The targets are going to come from somebody. Even if yeah. you throw the ball 40 times a game, there's not enough. But yeah, it's weird. Cause like you said, five or six of them. That's like the conundrum of the Patriots offense. Cause like you said, there's no individual player who like will scare an opposing defensive coordinator, but it's a very deep group. So that makes it very, very hard in fantasy. To, well, like, we haven't even guys. mentioned Nelson Aguilar still here as well. Oh, Is yeah. he going to have a role? Because if, if he has a role, this is going to be very difficult for fantasy because it just feels like no one's out there for all the routes. I just don't think he's going to have a role. Okay. I don't think he's not going to make the team just because of the cost of cutting him um, and carrying dead money. But I just, I just don't think between Bourne, Myers, John U. Smith, Hunter Henry, um, Ramondre Stevenson, Damian Harris, uh, Tyquan Thornton, I'm probably missing somebody. He's just so far back in the pecking order. And he just didn't give him enough bang for the buck. I don't think he's untalented. I don't think he's not trying. But I just think that it's just not him. But, again, changing offense, I could be wrong in terms of what it's going to look like when they start playing. That would give us some clarity, at least. That, that would be – If I could give you a straight answer, answer, I know. No, that was no, a pretty no. straight answer, to be honest. <laughs> That's a straight yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a straight answer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.